Made a lot of sense for the New York delegation to put Donald Trump over the top this week and proclaim him the Republican presidential nominee. One can then only imagine what the reaction was when their favorite son was dissed by the guy from Texas one night later. We don't have to imagine because only one man could give us the proper context of the word bupkis and make it work within the political sphere. Your knowledge of Yiddish will not necessarily be tested, but it couldn't hurt. So join us on the line right now at one eight seven seven Newsmax, one eight seven seven six three nine seven six two nine. Welcome back, founder of the Guardian Angels, political thinker. Heard every weekday at noon and again at five on WABC seventy seven in New York City. Curtis Sliwa joins us. That's right, the American thinker. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Curtis. Somebody said that Ted Cruz, with what he did last night, his chances of becoming president are now bupkis. What do you think? Uh, what would you expect of the guy? Whose father helped Oswald kill JFK? I mean, come on. Is it, I mean, I read that in the National Enquirer. And oh, if it's in the National that. Enquirer, everybody knows it has to be 100% true. Oh, well, wait a second. If you want to believe it, it sounds good to me, right? So you knew this was going to be a blend, blood vendetta. You knew this would be revenge. And Trump knew that he was giving the opportunity to uh, Ted Cruz to get up on that stage and seek... Uh, uh, let's say, a, a political jihad against Trump and all the Trumpers and Trumpets. But why would and you he- do that, though? Why would you do that, though, Curtis? Because, look, the reports coming out say that Donald Trump knew three days before, or at least his people knew three days before, that he was going to deliver this exact kind of speech. So either they figured it wouldn't hurt them, and they were exactly right, or on the other side, they don't care what anybody says at this point. I mean, it, hey. just, it seems like you wouldn't want to give your enemy a chance to go ahead and take a shot at you. Oh, come on. You know Donald Trump loves that shot because when he gets a right hook coming his way, he comes with the left cross. He said it over and over again. Bring it on. Bring it on. And you know he personally hates, he loathes, he despises Ted Cruz and all the Cruzites out there and those who consider themselves the founders of the Tea Party. Because let's face it, what Donald Trump has done in this election is steal the thunder from the Tea Party and claim that he is the anti-establishment candidate, not Ted Cruz, who proved himself to be that before Donald Trump came along. All right, now, I'm going to ask you a simple question here, because there's a couple of sides to this. If somebody insulted your wife, a member of your family, the way that they looked, and if somebody made unsubstantiated allegations about your father, connecting it to an assassination of a former president, how would you react? Well, I got to tell you, I've had four, count them, four wives, and I've insulted them publicly and privately as much as I possibly can because they've dragged me in divorce court and family court and they've stripped me of every nickel, dime, and penny I've had. So, hey, you want my wife? Take my wife. Now, my father, that's a totally different story. My father is my mentor. I got him up on a pedestal. Unfortunately, he passed three years before. But if you insult my father, then it's time for a fight. And let me tell you, I'll hit you so hard, your mother will feel the vibration. <laughs> but there are those people who say, wait a minute, Curtis, this is politics. You should know better than this. This happens in politics all the time. Go ahead. Grow up, snowflake. It's not a big deal. Uh, let me tell you something. <laughs> it's not about that. It's that Ted Cruz thought that he was going to be the independent autonomous candidate, the outsider. He objected to Trump stealing his thunder and just doing it better and having more of an entertaining aspect to his presentations, more fire in his belly. So look, there are a lot of reasons why Ted Cruz ain't coming on board. And like Kasich, they're looking at 2020. You know already they're looking four years ahead because they think that Trump is going to crash and burn and get gold watered by Hillary Rodham Clinton, Her Majesty. One eight seven seven Newsmax, if you want to join us, here's a comment. Pat is in Sanford, Maine. Pat, you're mad at Ted Cruz for not endorsing Donald Trump last night. What about the fact that Donald Trump insulted his wife? Hey, uh, Ed, Curtis, thanks for being on, man. Curtis, love you, brother. Hey, uh, Ted is just a crybaby. He didn't get what he wanted. And he, now he's, and the best thing Trump could have done was let him come on stage and look like an idiot. He shut down the government in 2013. Look that one up. He's just a big baby. He doesn't know how to act. And so somebody said something about your family. Wah, wah. Get over it. <laughs> uh, Curtis, it seems like you have kindred souls in here right now. Uh, all right, yeah. Curtis. I so got to tell you, uh, his rendition of Green Eggs and Ham, you know, from Cat in a Hat. That, oh, that I thought it was wonderful. Ever. 
I, that was I, pretty good. I, I, I thought it was wonderful. I'd like to see it again, as a matter of fact. I'd like to see maybe another one of these. And, and for the moment, all of a sudden, I'm blanking on other Dr. Zeus books here. Um, Curtis, my friend, what do you want to hear Donald Trump say tonight? Oh, I don't want him to disparage anyone from the past. Stay focused. Talk about what he's going to do to make America great again and be specific and focus his total angst, of which he's got much in that belly of his beast, on Hillary Rodham Clinton and none of the Republicans and none of the side issues. And on occasion, do a little improv off the teleprompter because we want a little taste of the Dono without necessarily the blowback that he gives you when he does an hour of stand up. Hey, here's the other big story that's going around that is completely non-political. Well, wait a minute. It actually is political. Roger Ailes is out at Fox. Matter of fact, I think a couple of blocks west or no, a couple of blocks east and a few blocks south. I think probably not far from the 77 WABC studios, if they are where I remember they are. And they're probably not. But getting back on point here right now, what do you think? I mean, Ailes is out. He's the guy that built Fox. But let's face it, without him and Fox, the Republican Party wouldn't be where it is today. Do you think Fox is still going to be just as powerful? Uh, where they are today? They, they, we had eight years of Barack Obama. What are you talking about <laughs> where they are today? But secondarily, Roger Ailes, what is he, an old out the cock? He's older than Bernie, the out of the cock of Sanders. He's going to retire with a platinum parachute, gazillions of Murdoch dollars. Don't feel any pain for Roger Ailes. He'll still be looking at a shot of leg, except from his retirement home in Boca Raton in Florida. What about that? You brought up a good point. As powerful as Fox is, and as, or they claim to be, and as powerful as everybody says that they are, eight years of Barack Obama. They failed in two elections to get the Republicans elected. What does that say about their power? Well, it's not only Roger Ailes and Fox. It's Rush Limbaugh. It's Sean Hannity. It's Mark Levin. It's Mike Savage. I can go through the whole laundry list. And even yours truly, Curtis Sliwa, because I'm not an Obamanite. And I got to tell you, as much as we squawk and talk and we add to global warming and climate change with all of our hot air, hey, look who's been president for the last eight years. And we should, you know, we've... We should actually soil ourselves because we weren't able to oust him the second time around. Please, Curtis, do me a favor. I, I know that we enjoy these times, but please don't talk about soiling yourself on the gear. It's, 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 it's very deleterious, my friend. Uh, uh, you know, I'm 62. Uh, I, no. I got it. 30 seconds. What do you think of Donald Trump's air kiss of Mike Pence last night? Uh, like everything else with Mike Pence, who cares? He's a person <laughs> of no consequence. Did anybody pay attention to his speech last night? Not even the scarecrows in the cornfields of Indiana. By the way, you want to tell people here, I alluded this at the beginning of the show, you want to tell people here what bupkis means? A bupkis means not even the hairs of my chinny chin chin. It means zero, squat nothing. There you go. I just wanted to make sure because I know I'll get some letters and I'll get some tweets, people saying that, you know, I made the word up. Look, Curtis and I grew up in New York. We know these words. Curtis is the only guy I can turn to to get the proper pronunciation and definition of these words. Uh, weekdays at noon, again at 5 p.m. Eastern, every weekday on 77 WABC in New York and on the web. It is where Curtis will give you your Yiddish lesson for the day every time. Curtis, thanks so much for joining us, my friend. Before we get out of here, this is the last show for one of our directors, our very talented Nico Gomez. He is moving on to bigger and better things. He is leaving us. How dare you, after all the support we've given you. Look, Nico, we love you. You're a hell of a human being. You've done a great job here. Good luck where you're going, my friend. Go kick a little basketball butt with Turner. Have some fun. You will be missed, my friend. And thanks so much for being here. Stick around. Uh, Nico won't, but you will. Our special coverage of the Republican National Convention coming up in mere moments. Rock on, true believers. Thanks, Nico. Good night and good luck.